Hey everybody, Matthew Larry here. I want to take a second to welcome you to Tuesday's edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. Now all this week on the broadcast, we're talking about honoring the Lord. And friend, as believers, you and I want to grow in our honor for the Lord. And we want to cultivate a lifestyle of honor where we are honoring God more and more in all that we do. Let's go back to Malachi chapter 1, and I'm going to read you some verses in that chapter as we start today's broadcast. It says this, The Lord said, A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where's my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Now one thing that's very interesting in that verse is that you can see God expects our honor. He expects honor from us. And as believers, it should be evident in our lives that we honor the Lord. Come on, it should be evident to people around us that God and His things are important to us. And they should see us treating the Lord and His things with a great deal of respect and a great deal of importance. The honor of God should be evident in the lives of the people of God. And God expects honor from us. Now verse 7 says this, or let's go back, excuse me. He said, if I be a master, where is my fear, says the Lord of hosts? Unto you, O priests, that despise my name. And you say, wherein have we despised your name? Now this word despise in this verse means to treat as insignificant or unimportant. You know, a lot of times when we hear despise, we can just think to hate. Well, that's one degree of despising. But another degree of despising is just to treat something as insignificant and unimportant. And the Lord is telling them, you've despised my name. You're treating me, you're treating my things as unimportant and insignificant. And they actually asked the Lord, wherein have we despised your name? And so they are dishonoring the Lord. They are not honoring him but they don't see it. They don't understand where and how they are dishonoring him. And so they ask the Lord. And so the Lord's going to show them. And he said in verse 7, You offer polluted bread upon my altar. And you say, Wherein have we polluted you? In that you say the table of the Lord is contemptible. Now that means that it's not important. Verse 8, the Lord said, And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto your governor. Will he be pleased with you or accept your person, says the Lord of hosts. And so how were they dishonoring the Lord? They were treating his things like they weren't important. They were treating his altar like it wasn't important. They were treating his offering like it wasn't important. They were treating his table. He said that you say the table of Lord is contemptible. They were treating the Lord's things like they weren't important. And how were they doing it? When it was time to bring an offering to the Lord, they were bringing the polluted bread, the bad bread, and they were bringing the lame and the sick animals for their sacrifice unto the Lord. And so they were bringing things to the Lord that weren't valuable to him, to them. And they were treating the Lord's things. By doing that, they were treating the Lord's things like they weren't important. They were treating them as insignificant. This is how they were despising the Lord. This is how they were dishonoring the Lord. They were doing it in how they treated His things. And friend, this is one of the main ways that honor or dishonor will show up in your life 
is how you treat the Lord's things. Come on, friend, today you got to begin to ask yourself, how am I treating God's word? How am I treating the church he's called me to? How am I treating his offerings? How am I treating the assignment that he's placed on my life? How am I treating my relationship with him? And friend, if you are treating those things like they're not important, if you have no time for them, and if you make no investment in those things, then you have dishonor in your life. And so what you need to do is you need to repent and get it corrected, and the Lord will help you to do that. But the thing I want you to see is that how you treat the Lord's things is how you honor Him. And He told this group of people, my table... My bread, my offering, you're treating it like it's not important. And by doing that, they were dishonoring him. Now, he said this to them in verse 7. He said, you say that the table of the Lord is contemptible. Or you could, we would say, you say it's not important or it's insignificant. Now, friend, they didn't actually say that with their words. Come on, they weren't walking around the temple saying, oh, God's table's not important. How were they saying it? They were saying that God's table wasn't important by how they were treating it. They were saying it with their actions, not necessarily with their mouths. And friend, you have to understand that we don't judge your honor for the Lord by your words and by your intentions. Our words and our intentions are not the measuring stick for our honor for God. How do we measure our honor for the Lord? We just watch ourselves and how we treat His things. And how we treat His things will give us a clear picture of our level of honor for the Lord. Now, the Lord told them, he said, you're despising me. You're not honoring me. And they said, wherein or how, in what manner are we not honoring you? And friend, here is the deceptiveness of dishonor. It's this, that oftentimes you don't see it in your life. You're dishonoring the Lord, but you don't see it. And these people didn't see it. And the reason that we don't see it is because we tend to judge our honor for God based on our words and based on our intentions and not based on how we actually treat His things. And so oftentimes when you and I do have some dishonor in our lives, we don't see it, we don't recognize it. But here's the good news. One of the things first before the good news is that, friend, if you and I, if we are dishonoring the Lord any way in our lives, we should want to see that so that we can repent and get it corrected. We should have hearts that are, that are crying out to the Lord today and saying, Lord, if I'm dishonoring you in any way, I want you to show it to me so that I can correct it and get it fixed in my life. I want to see it so that I can change and get it fixed. And friend, here's the good news. <laughs> if you do want to see it and you do ask the Lord to show it to you, he will show it to you. He will show you where you need to honor him some more. And you need to, he'll tell you, you know, you need to come up over here. You're not treating this like it's, like it's important. You're dishonoring me a little bit over here and you need to correct this and you need to get, need to get it fixed. Now, why would God want you to fix that dishonor in your life? Because he wants to honor you. And he said, those that honor me, I will honor, but dishonor in your life will actually keep him from honoring you. And this is why he wants to correct it. And if you ask him, he will show you and he will reveal to you the ways and the areas where you can honor him more. And I think we just need to stop the broadcast right now. And let's just ask the Lord together. Friends, say this with me as you're watching the broadcast. Say, Father, in Jesus' name. I'm asking you to show me how I can grow in my honor for you and any area of my life where I'm dishonoring you, Lord. I'm asking you to show it to me so that I can repent and get it fixed in Jesus' name. Now, come on, friend. If you believe that when you prayed it, God will start revealing to you 
where you need to grow in your honor for him. He'll even reveal some areas to you where you're not honoring him the way you should. And here's what you do when he does that. You say, Lord, forgive me. And then you make the changes you need to make so that you can honor him the way that you should. Now, in verse 8 of Malachi chapter 1, let's close today's broadcast with this. The Lord told them they were bringing them, bringing to him the bad offerings, the lame sacrifices. And God told them, he said, take those offerings to your governor and see if he will accept it. And what he was saying is basically try to pay your taxes to your governor with that offering and see if he will accept it. And the insinuation is they weren't taking that kind of offering to their governor, but they were bringing that kind of offering to the Lord. And friend, this is the height of dishonor. When you're willing to do something for someone else, but you're not willing to do it for the Lord. I need to say that to you again. The height of dishonor is that you're willing to do it for someone else, but you're not willing to do it for the Lord. How did they act in that manner? They were willing to bring the good offerings to their governor, but they weren't willing to bring the good offerings to the Lord. And this is the height of dishonor. And so many believers, and we don't need to judge anybody else. We just need to look at our own life. But for so many people, what many are willing to do for other things, they are not willing to do for the Lord. You know, friend, there's some things in your life that are worth your everything, your anything, your anytime, and your anywhere. What do I mean by that? You'll go anywhere for them. You'll move anytime for it. Come on, you'll give everything to it. You'll give anything to it. There's something in your life that is worth your everything. Come on, your anything. That you give anything for it. You give everything to it. There's something that's worth your anytime. What's that mean? Anytime that you need to move in favor of it or to work on it, you'll go. There's something that's worth your anywhere. In other words, you'll go anywhere for it. And when you find the thing that's worth your everything, your anything, your anytime, and your everywhere, you found what you honor the most. And friend, you and I don't want to be caught being willing to do something for something else that we're not willing to do for the Lord. You know, a lot of people are willing to go to a ball game and a movie or a movie and sit there for two or three hours and, and partake of the movie and the ball game. But when it comes to church, they're not willing to sit for more than a half an hour, more than an hour for the Lord. And so they're willing to do it for someone else, but they're not willing to do it for the Lord. A lot of people will take their money and buy themselves something nice and, and, and uh, buy, you know, spend money on themselves and what they like, but they won't tie. They won't take 10% of their income and give it to the Lord. And so what they're willing to do for something else, they're not willing to do for the Lord. And those are just a few examples. But friend, believe the Lord and ask the Lord that he would show you these things in your life. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to be caught being willing to do something for someone else or something else and not being willing to do it for the Lord. Come on, if anybody is worth it, it's the Lord. If anybody is worth my anything, my anytime, my everything, and my everywhere, it's the Lord. Because I want to honor Him more than I honor anything else. Come on, say it with me today as you're closing the broadcast. Lord, you are worthy of my anything, my everything, my anytime, my anywhere, and I don't want to honor anything else more than I honor you. Praise the Lord. Now, friend, as we're closing today's broadcast, I want to remind you of these three things. Number one, God's honor, our honor for God, should be evident in the lives of the people of God. Number two, they dishonored the Lord in Malachi chapter one by how they treated his things. And we see our honor for God in our treatment of his things. And then number three, the height 
of dishonor is when you're willing to do it for someone else, but you're not willing to do it for the Lord. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we are continuing to stand in faith and ask you to help us all this week on the broadcast and beyond to grow in our honor for you and to honor you more and more every day of our lives. And Lord, we're believing and we're asking you to show us any area of our lives where we are dishonoring you so that we can correct it, make the changes we need to make and get it fixed. And Lord, we know that when we honor you and the more we honor you, that you will honor us. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. And don't forget to come back tomorrow for Wednesday's edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. And we're going to continue this teaching on honoring the Lord. We'll see you then.